Jesus, Jesus, Come on, sing it one more time. I can believe it. Man. Sing yes. Mighty one, mighty one, we are excited. Mighty one, mighty one, we are excited for our tasting and sing. Your goodness, and I stood in the power of your praise. For I said, the depths of your mercy. Oh, how your love, it always surrounds me. My love. My and
And I Picture of your sleep on the other side of the night. Miracle in process. God, I never want to get in the dark. To the in the dark. Oh, 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 this is not before and after. Oh, 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 this is my life. Oh, 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 some things that you can't capture. Oh, oh, oh. Everything the life was
My eyes is you make beautiful things. I know cause you did it in me. My eyes is you make beautiful things. I know cause it did I know, I know, I know. I know I see you make beautiful I saw you this time, but you always had the last one. The last one was love. I thought it was over. Oh, I thought it was time. But you always had the last one. And I swear it was awesome. Oh, I thought it was over. Oh, I thought it was over. You always It's all it's all it's all it's all Last word is love. Now I barely recognize myself. I barely recognize myself. I barely recognize myself. I barely let you pass by.
something and I want you to put your hands on yourself on the board.
Okay, good morning. I want to welcome each of you here this morning. And in person, and we really celebrate that. Um, those of you who continue to join us on Facebook, we celebrate your presence here as well. A couple of real quick announcements. This past Wednesday, we did not have a um, devotional because it was impossible to get onto Facebook for some reason uh, to do it. Facebook kept sending me whether I use my phone or my computer. We're having a problem. We'll try to fix it real soon. And um, apparently, once they came back up, there was a message about moving into their new whatever they were doing. As you know, uh, Facebook has now changed its name. And um, so anyway, I apologize to you for that, but we will be meeting this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Um, the what is going to come up as a responsive call to reading is not our responsive call to reading for this morning. It is our New Testament lesson, and we will read it as a responsive call to reading at the time for the New Testament lesson, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, that's how, that anyway, that's how I had thought I had sent it. Um, it's not how I sent it. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we'll read it as a responsive reading, and that is our New Testament lesson for this morning, okay? That will make it a lot simpler for everyone. Okay. Uh, folks are still coming in. Hello. Um, I'm going to ask Shirley to come and lead us in our opening prayer. Good morning, church family and friends. Would you please pray with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord. We thank you for all the things you've done, doing, and about to do in our life. Lord God, you is no one like you. You are the real doctor. You are the real everything to us, Lord. And we thank you. We thank you for each and every person that's here. We thank you for the ones that's not here, whatever their reasons were or whatever, whatever happened, that they couldn't be here. We know that you're with them at all times. We want to thank you for everything everything lord not just one or two and we thank you for our dear pastor please be with him as he bring us your word today and be with each and every one here today and everywhere we thank you in jesus name amen please stand for our responsive reading and our new testament lesson this morning blessed are the poor in spirit Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For they are the kingdom of heaven. Please remain standing for our opening. Lost our say, find their way at the sound of your great name. All condemned, 
feel no shame at the sound of your great name. Everything has no place at the sound of your great name. He has to All the weak find their strength at the sound of your great name. Hungry souls receive grace at the sound of your great name. Among our prayer concerns this morning, I would continue to raise Myanmar. This is the second anniversary of the junta um, and the horrible things that are being done there. We also, many of us saw the video of Trey Nichols and we uh, pray for his family and we pray for the city of Memphis and we pray for our nation that we will find a solution that does not involve drawing lines between those whose job it is to protect our community and the community they 
parts of the Lord to take care of. We also want to continue to pray for Paul Pelosi, as many of you saw the video of him being attacked when uh, that was released this week. I will be headed um, this afternoon to Connecticut. Uh, my son-in-law was taken to the hospital last night. Over the last year, he has had a multitude of health issues and um, including a heart condition. And so they're trying to um, run some tests. And, uh, my daughter called me last night and asked me if I would come up. Um, at one level, you go, oh, my children still need me. And at the other, you start praying, dear Lord, do not let this man die. Um, and so please be praying for Krista and her husband, Dale, and the children. Um, are there other concerns, prayer requests this morning? Yes, ma'am. I have some on mine. Um, Richie, please, Joan, has us to pray for the pain he's having in his enlarged spleen. Um, Mr. Gilbert is still here. Um, he joined us again today. James Gilbert, and he just said good morning to everyone. And I would like everyone to continue to play, pray for my friend Victoriana. She did find a job. Um, in College Park at the Denny's there. So we can all go eat there and support her. And um, she's doing better. And I just thank her for her yes, and the When she's not working, will be joining us here for worship. Yes, ma'am. I thank you for my son, Allison, and also for my knowing son, Joseph. And of course, please keep me getting ready. Because I have a lot of things that he's following his body. Thank you. Um, Sandra Miriam, that hi, Stephen, prayers for your son in law. Little Krista. That is my cousin, Sandra, and thank you, Sandra. Um, I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. I pray for the children who go that don't know Jesus, and I pray that they give him before giving to the lady because he can't do anything in time and it's time to take the Jesus to raise his eyes. Yeah. Please pray with me. In the silence, I invite you to lift up the prayers of your heart, some of which we do not speak, but we know that the Spirit prays with us with groanings too deep for words. Oh God, we bring to you the world you have placed us in. For the homeless, O oh Lord, we pray. For those struggling to come back from addictions, O oh Lord, we pray. For those struggling with mental illness, O oh Lord, we pray. For those, O oh God, who have deep wounds from this life, that impact their behavior and their ability to cope, O oh Lord, we pray. The families, the family of Trey Nichols, O oh Lord, we pray. Welcome him into your kingdom. Heal the wounds of this life, forgive the sins of this life, and embrace him. We pray for those portions of the world that continue to be at war in Cameroon and Ukraine and Myanmar. Oh God, we pray for mothers who visit sons. We pray for those who sit in prisons and do not have anyone to visit them. We pray for those who 
have given up hope that you will light some flame of hope in their lives. And we pray for each one of us here this morning who has lifted a secret need or longing or pain of our hearts to you this morning, that you will come and be with us. You have promised you would not leave us comfortless. Come, Holy Comforter. We pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come on down. You remember my red wolf? Yes. And as I understand it, and I try to follow this, their pack is growing down in North Carolina on the Outer Banks. And you remember red here, the fox? Oh, well, this is little red. Hello, little red. I know there are a lot of them here. Where does the fox live? In the forest. Where does the red wolf live? In the forest, yes. They have to share the forest. Each one of them has to share not only with other foxes or other wolves, but with each other. And with deer and otters and skunks, skunks don't like it when you don't share. And all kinds of other creatures. They can't say, I'm an endangered species. So this is my forest, you have to go away. No, and the fox can't say, I was here first before they ever dropped this funny looking pack of wolves here. No, they have to share the forest. A lot of the things that we hear on the news are because people do not want to share the world with each other. They say, I was here first. Or, I'm better than you are because I'm an endangered species. Really? Or, I'm better than you are because I'm the quick fox. We have to learn to share. Not just our toys, and the ball at school when we're playing, but the world around us, because really all these animals need each other. When God made the world, God made it so that all the pieces of this world fit together. 
And we call that balance. Now, a fellow named Paul put it like this. He said, does the foot have a right to say, I'm special, I don't need it? You eyes will know. If I didn't have my eyes, I'd probably walk right into that. Each part of the body needs the other part of the body. And old people don't have a right to say, I don't need you young whippersnappers. What do you know? And young people don't have a right to say, listen, geezer, your knees don't even work. Who needs you? We need each other. And we all have to share the same forest and the same world. Let's pray. God, teach us to share. And in teaching us to share, teach us to give up the violence that we have used to tear us apart. In your name, amen. Would each one of you take care of a puppet during the church service? Thank you. Please stand up. Look around you. Welcome somebody that you haven't seen in a while. Wave at the nice people on, on Facebook. And because I know she is there, Yvonne, thank you. You will know what I mean. The peace of God be with you. Please come now and bless our Lord. Father God, thank you for bringing us all here today. Thank you for everything you've provided us with this past month. Thank you that you've provided us with enough to give a portion back to you, Lord. We just ask for your guidance and how you want it used. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise from Oh, Worship me for me. All of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship, all of my worship, and all of my worship. 
I'm always singing out in this place. Sweet old mind. Peace in mind. Talking to me. I will not be silent. I It seems to me as I read the Old Testament that God is frequently inviting people to court to come and state their case. The scripture I want to read from Micah 6, 1 through 8 this morning is such a time. Hear what the Lord says. Rise and plead your case before the mountain. And let the hear, hills hear your voice. Hear you mountains the controversy of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people and he will contend with Israel. When God calls us to court, he invites all creation to jury duty. Now, if you want to think about global warning, warming as a jury verdict, that could become very disturbing. I'll leave that with you because it isn't the focus of my sermon this morning, but take that home with you. Oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. 
I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shatim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. Each thing that God mentioned is a situation in which the people could do nothing. These were not times that the people could gather themselves and their wits about them and take care of their own problems. God is reminding them of God acting in the hopeless situation. And then says, with what shall I come before the Lord? Having been reminded of all of this and bow down myself before God on high. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with year old calves? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? With ten thousands of rivers of oil, shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? This was, I believe, a, re a reference to the sacrificing of children to gods like Moloch, who demanded the firstborn. But listen. He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. I have done all of this for you. What do I want? Do I want rivers of oil for sacrifice and thousands of rams and firstborn children to pass through the fire? No. All I ask of you is that you do justice, that you love mercy, that you walk humbly with your God. From Matthew 5, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Now, you can read this two different ways. I think either one is acceptable. I'll play with one of them in particular this morning. You can read that Jesus saw the multitudes and they were following him so he went up on the mountain and he sat down to teach and remember rabbis always sat to teach they didn't stand up and preach like I do they sat and taught many of you might wish I would sit when I start pacing back and forth but rabbis sat and taught so did he Preach this sermon to a whole bunch of people, or did he preach to his disciples? Was he laying out to his disciples a roadmap for the kingdom of God that they were going to have to learn how to share? Now, for today's message, I'm, I'm, and I know it can be read both ways, and I don't have a bias one way or the other, but I want to take one of them, okay? Because we're told, remember, that Jesus saw the multitudes and had pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. This morning, I'm going to suggest that there is a possibility 
that Jesus saw these crowds which were following him. We're told in, at the end of verse 4, and great crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. That Jesus saw these crowds and went up on the mountain with his disciples. And when it came time to teach, he sat down, sort of signaled, hey, gang, you know, gather around. And they came and sat around him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It is perhaps... not true, but the story made the rounds that Henry Ford, who taught a Sunday school class of young boys, told his Sunday school class of young boys that he was blessed, that he was wealthy because God liked him. How many people, think about it for just a moment, secretly or otherwise, look around them and say, God must like me a lot. Look at what I've got. I am blessed. And I want to maintain this morning that that's not what God does. Now, that's going to rock some of our worlds a little bit if we really take it seriously. But listen to what Jesus says. Blessed, in Matthew, he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. In Luke, Luke's real blunt, he says, blessed are the poor. Either way you slice that one, it's a surprise. To be poor in spirit is to be crushed. To, to, be, to be so beaten down that you not only have an emotional depression going, but you've got a spiritual depression to go with it. Ever known anybody with a spiritual depression? Have you ever had a spiritual depression of your own? It begins to feel hopeless and you start to wonder what God is doing. I remember working in a prison. Some of you have heard me say this before and watching the mothers get off the bus to walk often with stumbling steps to the visiting room, 15, 20 years of visiting incarcerated children. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are we when we can admit to ourselves and to God how broken we are. Our, our, our world seems to think that what we ought to do is walk around and never let them see you sweat. That way may be a way to do a business negotiation. And I have been in on some negotiations where you know you're surrounded by vultures and you want to make sure they do not see you sweat. But that's not a healthy way to come to God. It's not a healthy way to come to God. Blessed are those who know that they are crushed and who bring that crushedness to God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. 
the mother bearing a child, the spouse watching a marriage dissolve. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. If I would give one verse to Trey Nichols' mother this morning, that would be it. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Because you see, righteousness in the kingdom of God means justice. It is to do justice and love mercy and walk humbly. If you want a quick definition of righteousness, there it is in Micah. Do justice, walk humbly, and have mercy. Justice and mercy and humility are in short supply in our world. And many people thirst. I mean, like, yeah, this is going to sound crass. Anybody here ever had dry mouth? When I was young and you'd be on the football field and you, you know, and it's like, get me the Gatorade. There are people in this world who have dry mouth for justice. There are whole communities in this world who thirst for justice and whole communities of oppressed people that wish someone knew the meaning of the word mercy because humility among the powerful is in short supply. Blessed and the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Purity of heart is not the absence of all the things that we think make us impure. There was a fellow named Spron Kierkegaard who once said, purity of heart is to will one thing. Does our desire, our will for one thing, focus on God? If you want to see God, I don't think, I don't think, Jesus was talking about in the sweet by and by. Do you want to see God now? The purity of heart that will let you do that is to focus on that. There is a form of centering prayer in which that's what you do. You don't ask for anything. You're not having a conversation, which is often a good thing to have with God as a conversation, but it's to, to, to sit quietly in the presence. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes you can feel those arms come around you. To will one thing even for a few minutes during the day. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Who are our peacemakers? This may not be a particularly popular opinion, but very often our peacemakers are the folks with their cell phone cameras out recording what is happening because those are the ones 
who will insist that peace come to the violence created on the side of the road by renegade peace office, police officers. And believe me, I don't believe that all police officers are renegades. There are men and women in the police department of this city that I would trust my life to. And there are some that I would not trust any further than I could throw them. But the peacemaker may well be the person who says, uh-uh, this will not stand. And the peacemaker may be the one who says, I am in a position of power to do something about this. And you're right, this will not stand. And we have seen that lately. Do you remember the days when someone shooting a black man in the middle of an arrest got buried? You remember it took months for anybody to pay any attention to that if they did at all. And now at least we have moved far enough that there are some peacemakers pushing the boundary and saying, uh-uh no more. Do you remember the days, and those of you who are closer to my age will, when you could go to school hungry every day of your life? Where there were always kids in your class who didn't have proper clothes in the winter or food during the year, and if they were lucky, they had a friend who said, come by my house after school. And they had a mama who sort of took them in. Don't think that school breakfasts and lunches are not peacemaking. Because you cannot grow up hungry and not have anger. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I would maintain that all around us, there are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. If you want a in our lifetime example, at least in the lifetime of most of us here, all you have to do is think about the Petaman Bridge. When they come to crack your skull because you're trying to be a peacemaker, you are being persecuted for righteousness' sake. When they fire you from your job because you say, this boss is using his power to sexually harass the employees in this office, and you are let go, you are being persecuted for righteousness sake. When you stand for justice and mercy, you're being, and, and, people begin to dump on you, you are being persecuted for righteousness sake. This is a totally different description of how we get blessed than most of us have soaked in through our bones and our culture. And in each one of these, there is a moment of helplessness. I cannot control my morning. Who I lose from my family is beyond my control. So my grief and mourning are beyond my control. And that is the very moment that Jesus says, comfort will come to you. But if I try to walk around with a coat hanger in my mouth going, no, that's okay. No, we're over it now. It's only been two days, but we're over it now. 
Our child ran away. We don't know where he or she is. We're afraid they're dead, but we're, 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 we're okay. Where can we admit our grief? Think about it. Where, how many places can you really admit your grief? In our culture, when somebody dies, you get about two weeks to get your stuff together. And then people expect you to be ready to rock and roll. Why aren't you back at work? What's going on here? If this place, this place, this church is not a place to speak your grief, we will never be blessed. If this church is not a place where we hunger and thirst for justice and mercy and walking humbly with our God, we will never be blessed. Blessings come in the kingdom to those people of whom Jesus spoke and whom Michael reminds us that God does not want huge sacrifices. He, he doesn't need the the, the fireworks and the display. I, I, I watched a movie this past week called Honk for Jesus. And if you ever get a chance to watch it too, but essentially it is about an evangelical pastor who, who says, my congregation needs me to wear a product. God doesn't need spiritual product. What God wants and needs is that we do justice and love mercy and walk humbly. That we have a place and a community in which we can mourn and grieve. When we can speak our brokenness where mercy flows down like a river and our one thing that makes us pure in heart is our desire to see God, maybe even in those around us. Because each one of these things is aided by our capacity to look at our neighbor and see Jesus. blessed. I want to be blessed. You want to be blessed. But Jesus's recipe for being blessed is so different than the world around us that it takes, well, Paul said it best. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who though he was equal with God, took on the form of a servant and was obedient even unto death on a cross. Blessed. Will we be blessed? Amen. Please stand with me for our closing. When I think about the Lord, how we sing, how we raise, how we feel. The Holy Ghost, how we hear to the utmost. When I think about the how we pitch and turn, how we place my feet 
Go be blessed, and in your being blessed, be a blessing to the world around you. Strengthened by the knowledge and in the goodness of God, we were born. By the watchfulness of God, we are kept all the day long. And in the love and mercy of God, we are all the living. Amen. Have a great week. You're welcome, Mary Ann. Take care. <laughs>